so Juan, in, until we actually have a, a biomarker approved um, and, and validated, albeit I think we're really making good progress toward that, how, how do you use kidney histology in your, in your practice? Are you a proponent of evaluating with repeat biopsy? Yeah, it's a difficult one because we have to acknowledge that our current biomarkers are imperfect, especially proteinuria. Yeah, you can have inflammation, you can have kidney scarring, so you sometimes you don't know what's happening in the kidneys. And that's where the kidney biopsy goes in. So probably you may have some patients with complete remission as we define it right now. Clinically. Yeah, clinically. Yeah, their biomarkers are gone and probably it's going to do well. Well, even in those patients, you may find inflammation. So right now, what we do is that after one year of therapy in patients with residual proteinuria, we want to know what is that proteinuria translating activity or just chronic kidney disease. So in those patients, and I also use it very frequently in patients when I want to change treatment, I want to know what's happening in the kidneys before starting a new therapy. Maybe, and just maybe, in some patients with complete remission, no systemical symptoms, you can skip and just uh, follow them without a biopsy. But what we know now is that our clinical biomarkers... Yeah, let me push you on that. ...are not that good. So are you... Are you biopsying patients per protocol to say, I've got you where I want you in complete clinical remission, but before I get rid of medication, I'm going to biopsy? Do you do that? We do it mostly when we have doubts, and we have doubts right. many times okay. what's happening before. And we have doubts before doing important clinical decisions. One is, of course, tapering down and suspending therapy. Some other is, I want to have a pregnancy. What do I do? Okay, let's see what, how the kidney is doing. Mm -hmm. And then we decide if we go on because it may be too risky or it may be in a standard risk. So the kidney biopsy is still a, a valuable tool, so but I do not do a standardized you're, to every patient. You're, you're hedging. You're hedging because you won't want to stick a needle in. Yeah. No, I, and that's okay. I, I, I think, you, you know, in our practice, more and more, uh, based on the work that you and I have done and, and Anna, Malvar, and I have done, you know, uh, we really get the suggestion that, that without that histology at the end, simply using clinical parameters may still get you into trouble. And so more and more, we are doing what I would consider protocolized biopsies to understand when we can stop therapy or taper it off. Um, not ideal, of course, because we don't want to keep doing invasive procedures. Uh, but I think it's, it's what we have right now. Um, but I do think, you know, as we move into this realm of biomarkers, this, this, sort of repeat biopsy issue might become a moot point, which would be really excellent for the patient. Yeah, we have to know that if we don't do biopsies, we are never going to learn what's happening and never going to get to new biomarkers. So well, that's... that's that, That's a point in, in your... No, I think, I think that's, that's really a, a very important issue because traditionally, if you look at the biomarker literature, they're tagged to clinical parameters. So that means the biomarker can never do better than the clinical parameter. So we have to at least admit as a group that we have to do repeat biopsies to understand how the biomarkers work, and then maybe we can cut down on that sort of invasive uh, technique.